One thing that's usually not immediately appar apparent to students is why anti-periplanar arrangement of atoms matters. This is an excellent illustration of the value of using chairs as well as visualizing orbitals. So this is a place where I like to dwell some. We're going to need to put the t-butyl up and equatorial, which places it right there. That then is locking everything else in place. And you'll notice that the chlorine itself is likewise up. But in this up case, it is axial. And this is important because in order for a anti-periplanar style arrangement to take a place so that you can do an E2 elimination, the chloride actually needs to be axial. Okay, this methyl group is up, and which places it equatorial right there. This methyl group is down, which places it right there. Therefore, we have hydrogens at this position and a hydrogen down in the back at that position there. Why do I care about those two hydrogens? Uh, well, of course, there's also a hydrogen at this position, but this is the alpha carbon. That's the one that's not going anywhere. These are the beta hydrogens, right? This is the beta carbon. If this carbon is the alpha carbon, that's the beta carbon. That is the beta carbon. This is a beta hydrogen. That potentially could be eliminated. This too is a beta hydrogen. That also could potentially be eliminated. So again, now we imagine that we have some base floating around. And now let me exaggerate the size and use a relatively large hindered base, like say potassium terpetoxide. This then is is going to try to find its way to the sigma star orbital. And then, of course, the sigma star orbital is going to be located on this alpha carbon and is going to be opposite the carbon chlorine bond. So this is trying to flow to that sigma star orbital, but it encounters the beta hydrogen first. In principle, of course, you could imagine encountering this beta hydrogen. But if you look at this sigma bond right here, you will notice that it is poorly aligned with that particular orbital. Orbital. This hydrogen is sticking up and right in the equatorial position. The orbital that this sigma bond, the sigma star orbital that this would need to overlap with is down vertically in the back. There's no overlap between the sigma orbital here and the sigma star orbital. If you try to abstract this hydrogen, there's nowhere for these electrons to go. Keep in mind, what is the pKa of one of these two beta hydrogens? Well, the pKa in general for these is around 50, which is to say the pKa about 16 for the potassium terpetoxide is nowhere near strong enough to do the deprotonation unless there's a place to put those electrons and that place will be created by the chlorine leaving. This sigma star orbital is what lowers the pKa of these hydrogens enough to cause this reaction to take place. Again, this orbital is not aligned correctly. This orbital right here is. This orbital is aligned perfectly. So if we encounter this hydrogen instead, the electrons flow from that orbital into the sigma the star orbital, the chloride leaves, boom, there you have it. The product that will be formed is going to be a double bond that's right there in the back methyl. In other words, run this reaction in the presence of potassium terpbutoxide, and what you get specifically is going to be elimination of the chloride to form a double bond, and that double bond is going to be where the up methyl was. The hydrogen attached to the carbon with the down methyl is unaffected. Said another way, this is going to be a stereospecific reaction. Do this elimination and you get this product and only this product. You get no product from elimination of this hydrogen and that's because this hydrogen is poorly aligned with the sigma star orbital that it needs to donate its electron density into. If you can't follow this easily on the board, you definitely want to build the model and take a look at it. So what we have here now is the model and the chlorine bond is going to be right there, which means that the orbital that we're going to have access to in order to cause the reaction to take place is the sigma star star orbital that exists right here. This methyl is the down methyl. This methyl is the up methyl. Here's the hydrogen that's lined up well with this sigma star orbital. So the sigma star orbital is there. This hydrogen in particular can push electron density into this sigma star orbital. Meanwhile, this hydrogen, this equatorial hydrogen is poorly aligned. The orbitals down here, this hydrogen is sticking up and away. In other words, that hydrogen cannot access this orbital. The electrons from that hydrogen cannot access that orbital when abstracted. So the base comes in, tries to remove that proton. It can't because there's nowhere for these electrons to go.
go, the base comes in, tries to remove this proton, electron flows to the sigma star orbital that's sitting right there. The anti-periplanar arrangement tells us about possible regioisomers. Said another way, in principle, either of these two hydrogens could have been abstracted. In practice, only one regioisomer is formed. You only make the double bond on one side and not on the other. In rings, it's fairly easy to illustrate this, but the Pelkey handout has a problem illustrating the same exact principles with a Newman projection. So as long as you have to consider where the alignment of the antiperiplanar hydrogens are, then it can tell you which regioisomers you get out of, say, a chair-like system, or possibly in terms of a Newman projection, there's only one possible stereochemical outcome. And here I'm going to walk through the Pelkey handout problem from a slightly different perspective. I'm going to use slightly different Newman projections than the ones he did because I want to illustrate the orbitals a little bit. Again, the carbon-bromine bond currently has a sigma orbital that sits right here, but it also has a sigma star orbital, and that's the one that needs to have electron density into it in order to break the bond eventually. So there's the sigma star orbital, and you will notice that the large lobe for the sigma star orbital is in the back. You will also note that the carbon in the back is currently eclipsing the carbon in the front, or perhaps the carbon in the front is eclipsing the one in the back. No matter, if a base were to come by and try to abstract this hydrogen, this hydrogen is not well aligned with that particular orbital. Now I've drawn this particular rotation where the carbon in the back has rotated over the carbon in the back has rotated in such a way that the hydrogen is now well aligned. So in red, what I'm drawing is the sigma star orbital for the carbon bromine bond. Meanwhile, that carbon hydrogen bond in the back, I'm going to draw shaded and in blue. And you can see that those two are now nicely aligned. And so if a base were to come by and attempt to deprotonate, it would cause the electron density to flow into that hydrogen. That would then flow into the sigma star orbital, which would then flow there. The outcome is is going to be a double bond where both phenyls are on the same side and the methyl is opposite.